Pock have just launched a brand new aero road helmet called the Ventral. Their first in quite a few years is designed it to be faster than their Octal while still maintaining ventilation. There is loads of great tech. So let's get ready. We're going in. This is the brand new Ventral helmet from Pock. And this behind me actually is also POC. This is their HQ. They kindly invited us out to Stockholm in Sweden to take us through the new helmet. So we're going to be hearing from one of the engineers that actually designed it. But before we do, let me give you the briefest of overviews. So the Ventral is the result of a two-year process. It was designed to build on the work of the Octal, which came before it, that was launched in 2014. Now that helmet wasn't designed as such, but it was clear very quickly that it was an aerodynamic helmet still. And so the idea behind the Ventral was that this would build on that work without compromising ventilation. This is Magnus, who is one of the two design engineers who works on helmets. And therefore, it's fair to say, Magnus, isn't it, that you are probably best placed to talk us through the tech on the new Ventral. And the first thing that I want to come to is the aerodynamics. I think for many of us, when we think of an aerodynamic helmet, we think of something that's really smooth, that air can pass freely over the top of. But my impression when I look at the Ventral is that actually I can't really see much helmet at all. I just see vents. So how have you guys managed to make vents aerodynamic? Yeah, that, that is actually the basic idea with this helmet, that we, we with the experience we have from the Octal helmet, uh, which is proven to be super fast and very ventilated, we wanted to make an even faster aero helmet with the same ventilation. So we use something called the Venturi effect here, uh, which is uh, uh, in aerodynamics you call it Venturi when you make air travel from a big volume into a smaller volume and then out to a bigger volume again. And that's exactly what happens in these channels. So the big volume is here and then it goes into the uh, vent hole, traveling through uh, these channels in a really high speed, close to your head, and then out again in a big so volume. So that's the venturi effect. The air inside the helmet is effectively traveling faster than the air outside yep. the helmet. Then. The CFD we, we done uh, shows that exactly. Wow. So that for, presumably, that's moving more heat away from your head at the same time, right? That's great. Now, as Magnus was explaining, a helmet that tries to be invisible to the wind can be more aerodynamic than one that tries to get air to pass smoothly over the top of it. But one of the conditions that it needs is for air to be able to reattach smoothly after the helmet, after it has either gone through it or over the top of it. And so one of the things that the Ventral has up its sleeve is this critical angle at the back I'm told that 22 degrees is a commonly known figure in the aerodynamic world that is very, very important. One of the things to bear in mind with aerodynamics is that the drag is not only caused by pressure buildup in front of an object, but also by turbulence behind it that is literally dragging you back. The aim of this rear section of the ventral is to minimize this, as you can see from these CFD images. All the air flowing through the helmet rejoins the air flowing around it with minimal turbulence thanks to that rear edge and the large exhaust ports at the back that merge the accelerated airflow from within the helmet. We talked about the uh, performance of the helmets, the aerodynamics and also the ventilation, but that's not why you wear it. Of course, you wear it because you hope that it's going to improve your safety in the event of a crash. So Magnus, perhaps we can go through some of the more important features there and the safety features. Uh, I know that the padding inside is a new thing for you. So this is your own design called Spin, right? Yep. And so this is, it works in effect in a way a bit like MIPS, is that right? You guys were the first to bring MIPS to the cycling market, but now you've got Spin instead. So a lot of um research recently shows that oblique impacts are really dangerous for you and uh, so we want to minimize that violence um, in a way and we still want to do it in in the um, more or less the original design of the helmet okay and so we came up with this idea a couple of years ago and we did a lot of research and testing on it and um, we've found really good results the system is more or less in the pad in itself okay. it's a silicon um, bladder at the bottom and uh, it's a regular uh, foam on, on top, as you see on all different paddings out there. But the bladder makes it sheer like this. So it actually is moving uh, inside the helmet. And okay. that is um, lowering the, the uh, impact in a, in a crash, in an oblique crash. So, so when it's on your head, effectively, the helmet, there's a little bit of movement in there so that in the event of those crashes where 
I don't know, let's, let's not get too graphic, but you know, you're crashing, the tarmac is there and you hit it, and then instead of your head being whipped round by the helmet, the helmet's taking some, literally absorbing some of the energy That's in the great. padding itself. Yeah. So inside here you see these, these pads and they are like, you can, you, you can move them around like this, but they are still fixed like normal pads. Yeah. As Magnus was saying, POC look at the helmet as a whole to try and reduce those rotational forces. And so despite the effectiveness of the spin system, we shouldn't, they stress, become obsessed by those figures because the helmet has to be designed to perform in other ways as well. So in this case, for example, the EPS is actually designed as well to absorb those rotational impacts. Part of it is done by the central ribs, which is designed to collapse and absorb those impacts. And then as well, one of the other things is the external shape. Now, when the Octal was first launched, that smooth outer there and the smooth rear end was quite distinctive. And one of the reasons it's in place was actually to help the helmet slide in impacts, thereby reducing rotational force. Now, when you guys launched the Octal Magnus, it, it looked quite different to many other road helmets on the market. And part of that, I guess, is because it extended further down over the temples and also the back of the helmet here. And this one, I gather, you've beefed up even more on the back of the helmet, why is that? Yeah, we, we work uh, really closely to, to the team we sponsor and the pro riders, and we get crashed helmets from them. So well, when they crash, we tell them to send it here to, so we can look into it and see how it's actually... Wow, who's is that one? Uh, Davide Formolo uh, from Paris last year. He had a really bad crash and uh, is on over and over again. We actually see that this area is very common to this is Skujin's terrible crash last year. Oh uh, yeah, his infamous uh, Tour California crash. Yeah, yeah it's also uh, in the same same region, so it's proven again and again that this is a very important area of the helmet. So we uh, in the ventral we beefed it up, as you say, and uh, on the inside we also instead of taking away material here, we actually added some uh, EPS uh, to make it even safer in that area. So is that, there is there's a thicker, yeah, it's slightly thicker, and uh, we kept we kept the shape from the octal going as far down as as there. Now talking of EPS, the density used in this ventral is ever so slightly different from the octal, which I thought was particularly interesting. And the reason is, the size of these large front vents means that actually they have to use a different EPS for structural reasons. But although you may think that the overall look of the helmet is that it's a slightly lower profile than the octal. Actually, exactly the same thickness of EPS is used between both of those lids. But the reason it looks slightly different is because the design and the profile of it has been softened ever so slightly for that slightly different aesthetic. Back to these new spin pads very quickly. As GCN's sweatiest presenter, I was slightly concerned that a silicon barrier in there would make the pad a little bit well, impermeable, but I've been assured that the foam on top acts completely normally, and so sweat is still wicked away. Perhaps more importantly for me though, at the end of the day, they are still washable. And actually, although they're new to the road helmets, they were launched in the winter sports helmets for this 2017 winter season. So it, it has been proven for sweaty people. Before we leave this video, you will, I'm sure, want to go back to performance. However, they didn't really want to get into watts or comparisons with other manufacturers. But needless to say, they are quietly confident of the performance of this. It does weigh a little bit more than the Octel, although it's still only 248 grams for a size medium. And you're going to be seeing it on the heads of EF Education First Draft Pack, presented by Cannondale, well, as of now, in fact. And indeed, it is also in the shops as of now. Price is 299 euros, or $290. Okay, so that is the Ventral in a nutshell. If you want to see a little bit more about POC, and I suggest you do, because it is a super cool company, and we've had a great day here in Stockholm, then make sure you head over to the main GCN channel, because we've got a really good little look behind the scenes with the brand. You can get through to that one just down there. And in the meantime, do make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like your tech, because there's plenty of it here.